In today's video, we'll be taking a look at how to dynamically populate our select fields in an Elementor Pro Forms from a custom post type or a custom taxonomy using dynamic shortcodes. This not only works with select fields, but the same principle can be applied to your radio buttons or your checkboxes. So now let's go ahead and take a look. So here we have an Elementor Pro form that I created and the events are being pulled dynamically from the CPT called events. And when I click on it, you see these are a list of events. If you go to the back end, we see the events custom post type, which I created using ACPT. And you can just see the list of events, which also have the custom taxonomies. So we have our events and that's the list of events. In a future video, I'll show you how to add a bonus of an event location that only pops up when we choose an event. So see, I chose Melbourne and then we get three event locations. If I choose Barcelona, it only gets one location, which is Spain. And these are all done dynamically because these are the custom taxonomies. If I go back to the back end, see these are the taxonomies. One is just Barbados, we have Spain and all of them. So all of these, I was just assuming that they are different locations. So maybe you have an event that is happening in both China and in Spain. So the person can try to contact you for the event that is specific to a state or a country. So say one event, where exactly is it happening? And then he chooses those two. As a bonus again, we'll be able to do it from the events single post template. So let me show what I mean. So we come over to a single post. Let's say this is the Afro-Caribbean Rhythms Festival. So if I click on learn more, see, it goes to the Afro-Caribbean already selected. So let's go to another example. Let me choose maybe Melbourne. Click on it. I choose learn more and it immediately selects Melbourne. And like I said, the event locations is just only the three locations that I set up for the taxonomy of the event. So it doesn't show up all the other locations. If I choose any other one, that is Spain. If I choose maybe retro, okay, that's also Spain. Let's look for a random one. Okay, this is United Kingdom and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and see how we can create it. So here we are on our Elementor edit page. Let me go ahead and drop in a new form widget and we'll start from scratch. So form, let me go ahead and clear out the inputs. Let's add a new item. I'll choose the type should be select or let me just choose radio or checkbox in this case. So checkbox, just to show you that either one of them is the same principle because they all have the same option. This is the key bit here. So we're trying to get the post titles from our custom post type called events. And if you read the instructions, all you have to do is give each of the post title on a line and you can separate it into key value pairs so using the pipe symbol. So those are the two things we need to remember. If you want to separate it, you write like post title, pipe symbol, and then the post ID that might be useful when you're trying to now search using the parameter on the search. So I may try and do that. So I'll say post title, pipe symbol, and the post ID. So let's see how we can create that. So we'll go to the options, click on the dynamic tags, and I'll choose dynamic shortcodes, and then I'll click on the bench icon. Since we're trying to query for posts, the query shortcode can only be created by an administrator. So it has to be done in a power shortcode. I'll leave a link to the documentation in the description. So this is the query dynamic shortcode. All you have to do is say query column, the type of query, which in this case is posts. So we say query posts and we give a set of key arguments which you can learn more about in this documentation. Then let me go ahead and show you 
the example part of it. So this is how you can handle the results of the query. So in this case, like I said, we want to show post title, pipe symbol, post ID, and then each of them on a new line. So this is how the for loop will look like. So you see for column, we put a placeholder, put the query, and then we put a template that we want to pull. So let's see how we can do that in the PowerShell code. Here's an example that they're showing you. This is using ULLI tags. If you want to just do a separator with a comma, this is how you do it for users and so on. So there are examples here. But our main focus here is posts and then want to do it one on a new line. So let me come back. Then I have to open the PowerShell code. So you have to go to the back end. Then I'll go under dynamic shortcodes, power shortcodes. You can also see more about the query in the demo shortcodes. You don't really need to go to the documentation. There are demo shortcodes already created for you. So I'll come to power shortcode. Then I'll go to the bottom and I'll create a new shortcode. I'll give it a name, maybe in this case, events query. Then let me zoom in a little bit so it's easier for everybody to see. Then increase this a little. Okay. So I'll open and close the curly brace. We have to start with a for loop. I'll give it a placeholder. As you can see from the example, we need to create a placeholder. In this case, I can just say post ID as a placeholder. It can be anything. But just to make it meaningful, I'll say post ID. I'll go to a new line. I'll open and close the curly brace. This is the iterable value, which is the query say query posts then i need to specify the post type so say post underscore type equal to you can get the key for the post type from whatever plugin you use to create the custom post type in this case i use acpt so i'll go to acpt custom post types then i'll look for the name which is events so let me copy that I'll come back to the PowerShell code and then I'll paste that as the name. Because it's just a single word, I don't need to wrap it in the quotation marks. Or if it's multiple words, because this is a string, then I will have to wrap it in quotation marks. Then let me say posts per page equal to, let me just give it a large number, let's say 50. Or you can use minus one if you want to query all of them. But I just like writing a, a standard number, so I'll just say 50 in this case. So now we have created the iterable value, which is our query post. The final thing to create is the template. So for the template, I'll open and close some square braces. And I'll start the template. So what I want to do is I want to retrieve the post title. This query post is going to be giving us the post IDs, which will be wrapped in this variable called post dash ID. But I want the post title for it. So I'll say post, I have to open and close another short code. So let me just make it in a new line again. Use the post title at ID equal to, open and close the curly brace and say get post dash id so that is get this placeholder that i've created so each of these post ids is going to be stored in this variable called post id or this placeholder so that's why we're getting the placeholder which is the id for the post title so that's the first one then like i said i wanted to also get the post ID. so post title pipe symbol and then the post ID to pipe symbol and I'll say get post dash ID. So this is all we need. We have to now go and make sure it's working. So let me save it. Save successfully. Then I'll copy this short code. So you can use it with this short code. So I'll just have to copy this. Then I'll come back 
and see whether it's working. So come back to the wrench icon and then paste it in. So it's working, but it's a little bit of problem. I didn't set the separator. I'm supposed to separate them one in a new line. So let's go back and add the separator. So come after the template. See, at, as you can see from the query, see this, this separator. We're trying to get a new line separator, not a comma separator. So let's go back to the short code. Say SEP equal to backslash N. That is the PHP um, terminology for new line to so backslash N. And let's see now if it works. So let's remove all of these spaces in the template. Save it and see if it works. So come back and publish, refresh. So yeah, it's working now. So we get all the list of all our post titles, all of them given in a checkbox. If you don't want that, you can come back to your fields. I think you can just change it to a radio. It changes to a radio field. If you want to change it to something like the select field, it gets into the select field and everything is working just fine. So let me publish this. Then let me zoom out a little bit. Preview on the front end. And let's go ahead and inspect it. So if you see, each of the options now gets the post title and the value is the post ID. So what this does is that it now helps us when we're trying to search from a different page. So let's go to the page. So for our events, see when I create a new event, you see this button over here? All it's just doing is sending a query parameter with the post ID. And that post ID is now what is being selected in the post. So let me show you how I created this. So go edit with Elementor, Edit the single post template. Then I'll come to the button. And all I'm doing is I'm using a dynamic shortcode. Click on the wrench icon. I'm using the build URL to make it easy. So I'm just saying get the URL for the events booking page. And then add a query parameter of post-id is equal to the ID of the current post. So that's it. That's how simple it is. Then I'll come to my form. And within the form again, I'll go under the advanced tab, then set the default value, click on the dynamic tags, click on the power short code, click on the wrench icon. And this time we're going to be using the param get. I showed it in one of my previous video. The link will be in the description. All you have to just do is open and close the curly brace, say param get, so you're saying parameter get, colon, and then I just give the key. The key was called post dash ID. So when I publish it, you might want to create a fallback. So after the post ID, I just put question mark. So if, if there's no value found, just return a blank space, publish. So that one is set up now. Now let's see if it's actually working. So I come to one of my posts under the events. Let me choose a random post. Then I'll click on learn more. As you can see, it is selecting the Lantern extravaganza. And if you go to the URL bar, you see it's called post-id equal to 200 because that's the post ID. Let's confirm it, right click, then inspect it, check the select and look for 200. As you can see the 200, which is selected 
is the lantern extravaganza. So that's how simple and easy you can do it to pull in your dynamic data into your select field or your checkbox or your radio field. And then how you can actually dynamically select it as well. So that's it. In a future video, I'll show you how you can go further and do the dynamic select so that when you select any option, you can now select a further select field that will be below it. And that will just be populated based on what your previous selection is. Thanks for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Please, if you have, like the video, write in the comments what you enjoyed about the video and what you want me to improve in the video. And until next time, enjoy. Bye.